What is up guys? Welcome to another video. In this episode, we're going to get the AI to start walking around our character, getting ready to attack. You can make your AI circle the player or move both ways like mine does. I know the animation looks a little bit silly right now, but in the next episode we're going to be changing the animation to a strafing animation. So this video is actually a continuation from my previous AI tutorials, so be sure to check out those before watching this one, I'll leave a link in the description. So before we do all that fun stuff, I want to quickly thank all my Patreons for supporting me, it really does mean so much to me guys, so thank you so much. So the first thing I'm going to do is just turn our NPC so he's facing our direction and then open up the behavior tree. I'm going to disconnect our follow spline path for now and move our chase player over to the left side. So we've got our chase player, now we need to create another sequence coming off the right side for the AI to move around our character ready to attack. And we want our AI to do this when he's in attack range of us. So let's go into our blackboard. Create a new variable as a type bool and call this in player range. Back into our behavior tree, on our sequence, let's right click, add decorator, blackboard. Call this in range. Set observer abort to both, key query to is not set, and the blackboard key to our in player range bool we just made. Okay, cool. So now we'll only run these tasks if our in player range bool is false. Now we need a way to update this bool. So we can do this with a service. A service is basically just a way of checking and updating values on a reoccurring tick. So while our tasks are being run, our service is running in the background, checking and updating certain values. So let's create a service by clicking the service button at the top. Unlike tasks, which require a start and finish node, services only require a start node. So right click and bring in a event receive activation AI. Off the controlled pawn, bring in a get distance to node. Then bring in a get player character node and plug this into other actor. Then off the get distance to, bring in a less than or equals to node. Now let's create two variables. One called range as type integer make sure instance editable is checked and one called BB ref as type blackboard. Make sure instance editable is also checked. Let's control drag in our range and plug that into our less than or equals to node. You may be wondering why we haven't given the range a value, but don't worry as we made this instance editable, we can do this in our behavior tree. Then let's control drag in our blackboard ref, pull off this and bring in a set blackboard value as bool, then plug the less than or equals to bool into that value. So this service is checking the distance between our AI and our character. If the distance between the two is less than our range value, our player in range bool we made will go to true. If the distance is greater than our range, it goes to false. Into the content browser, let's rename this service, call it is player in range. Then back into our behavior tree, let's right click our sequence, add service, is player in range. In the details, set the range to around 250. This is how close you want the AI to be to our character. Then set the blackboard ref as our in player range bool. So now if we click play, our AI will run up to us. As soon as he's in range and is player in range is changed to true by our service, the AI will no longer chase us. So in the behavior tree, there's two more things I want to add before we move to the other sequence. The first is to create a task to change the AI's movement speed. When the AI is circling our character, we're going to reduce his movement speed. And when he's chasing us, we're going to put his movement speed back to its default value. So into our content browser, let's duplicate our get spline location task and call this set movement speed. Open it up and delete everything but the start and finish nodes and our cast to NPC. Off our cast to NPC, we're going to get the character movement. Then off our character movement, we're going to set max walk speed. Pull off our max walk speed and promote this to a variable. Call this walk speed and set it to instance editable in the details. Delete our blackboard reference variable as we don't need that. Then connect up the line compile and go back into our behavior tree. 
Bring in our set movement speed task we just made and in the details section, set our walk speed to your AI's normal walk speed. Mine is 550, so I'm just gonna put 550. Now, one more thing before we move on. We want our NPC to constantly be facing us. So let's make a task for this. In your content browser, duplicate any one of your tasks, call it rotate to player and open it up. Delete everything but the start and finish nodes. Then off the owner controller, bring in a set focus node. Bring in a get player character node and plug this into the focus. Then connect the line together. So this set focus node quite simply tells the AI controller to rotate the AI to face our player character. Unlike other nodes, set focus doesn't need to be constantly fired. So once this is run once, our AI will permanently focus on our character until set focus is called again with a new focus. So back into the behavior tree, bring in our set focus task and connect this into our sequence. If you play now, you will see your AI rotating towards your character. Cool, we're done with this sequence, now let's program the movement. In our behavior tree, let's duplicate our first sequence and plug it in coming off our selector. To prevent any confusion, let's call our first sequence chasing player and our second one circling player. Now let's change some settings. For cooldown, set it to how many seconds you want your AI to wait between moving around. I'm going to set mine to two. We're going to leave can see player as we only want to run these tasks if our AI can see our player. And for in range, we're going to set it to is set. So if our AI is in range of our character, run these tasks. Let's duplicate our set movement speed task over to our circling player sequence. But this time in the details, set the movement speed down to 75. Now, we need a vector variable to hold the location we want to send our AI to. So in our blackboard, new vector, and call this strafe location. Back into our behavior tree, let's duplicate our send to location task and set the variable to strafe location in the details section. So now, the last thing we need to do is create a location. And I purposefully left this until last as it's quite a bit of maths, but don't worry, I'll walk you through it. So into your content folder, duplicate your get player location task and call it get strafe location. Double click to open it up and delete everything except the set blackboard value and the start and finish nodes. We can disconnect everything and put our set blackboard and finish node to the side for now. So what are we actually trying to achieve here? We're trying to make the AI move in a circle around our character. So to do this, we need to generate a location which will move our AI to the next position in the circle. So to get the AI to go from its current location to the next position in the circle, we need to move him forward a small amount and then to the right or left a large amount. So let's use the power of maths to do this. First, we need to get our AI's location. So off the control pawn, cast to our AI, mine's called NPC, right click and convert this to a pure cast, then pull off this and get the mesh. Then off the mesh, get world location. So we've got our AI location, now we need to add on a forward value. So off the controlled pawn, let's bring in a get actor forward vector node. This finds whatever value is in front of our pawn. Let's multiply this by a float and put in 50. So now we've created a value 50 times in front of the AI. Let's add this onto our AI start location. So pull off one of your locations and bring in a vector plus vector node. Now we've generated a location in front of our AI. Now we need to move it to the right. So off the controlled pawn, get actor right vector node. Control W to duplicate your multiply node, but this time put 150 in it. Now let's add this onto our location. Add a pin on our existing vector add node and connect it up. Okay, so we've generated a location around here by adding a forward and a right vector onto our original location. Let's bring in a draw debug line node 
so we can see this easier. Put the AI location in the line start and our newly created location in the line end. Put the duration to 10 and thickness to 5. Now we can also connect up our blackboard value to this and send over our generated location to the blackboard. So we're still not done here as this will only move our character to the right, not left. But let's test it out before we move on. Into our behavior tree, bring in our newly created task. Mine's called get strafe location. Connect this up in between the set movement speed and send to location. Make sure in the details section the variable is set to our strafe location variable. If your enemy has a weapon equipped, make sure to turn off collision so it doesn't start popping our character. Okay, cool, that's all working fine. Now let's make it so our AI can move to the left as well as right. So back into our get strafe location task, we're gonna duplicate everything except the start and finish nodes. Reconnect the start references into our nodes and our blackboard into our finish node. Now for the big reveal. How do we change all these nodes so our character can move left instead of right? And I'm sure some mathematicians out there have already figured it out. We just throw a minus in front of our 150 in the multiply right vector node. So it's basically multiplying it in the opposite way. Now to decide if we're gonna move left or right, we're just gonna use a random int node. So right click, bring in a random int in range node. Then put in zero for min, one for max. Pull off the return and bring in a equals node. Then hold B and click to bring in a branch and connect these up together. So if the random in we generate is zero, we're gonna move right. If it's one, we're gonna move left, simple. And there it is guys. Like I said, in the next episode, we'll be tweaking the animation so our AI actually strafes. If you'd like to see that episode this very second, head over to my Patreon, check it out and get that early access. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Peace. Right